Hi guys, thanks for dialing in today. I'm Sean Greenwood here from the Parkland Land Industries Guild. Um, today we're here for a talk from Matt Oxley and uh, Paul Millard uh, from McDonald Bentley about Dan Plasco a pipe upgrade. Um, can I just ask you to put your um, phones on mute? There's a couple of people dialed in that haven't got it on mute. Um, one chap on a mobile 0774 if you can go on mute that would be really helpful. Um, we have got another meeting coming up in the new year. We've got a break in January, but over in February we've got one leak tight double block and bleed um, from Stats Group. Um, basically, it's a double line stop, which is quite an interesting one. Um, but for now, today we're with um, Paul and Matt. Over to you guys. Cheers. Thanks, Sean. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Matt Oxley. I'm the contracts manager from MMB, and next to me I've got Paul Millard, who's our project lead as well from MMB. And we're here today to present our scheme for uh, Dan Flask scour pipe upgrade that we carried out in 2018 for our client Yorkshire Water. Thank you, Matt. So, uh, presentation, um, we'll focus on the background to the project. Uh, and then uh, cover a range of elements of the scour upgrade itself. Well, um, looking at the design details, the construction challenges, uh, and the operational improvements that the scheme provided. And then finally, towards the end of the presentation, uh, we'll go into some uh, sort of conclusions uh, and then welcome some questions. So, the project background uh, back in 2015, uh, statutory inspection of the reservoir um, identified that the existing SCAR system. Um, have insufficient capacity uh, to draw down or empty uh, the reservoir as uh, may be required uh, in emergency. Um, in addition to this, um, the uh, existing valve arrangement um, meant that the flow control valves used to operate the SCAR system uh, were located uh, within a, a tunnel uh, called the SCAR tunnel, uh, and this tunnel um, is uh, it's designated as a confined space and therefore required the client uh, and their operations team to follow uh, specific procedures that were quite um, onerous in terms of uh, getting their staff uh, into that space and able to operate the valves and operate the system. So, uh, Mott McDonald Bentley, uh, joint venture between Mott McDonald and uh, Jane Bentley, uh, were appointed uh, under the AMPSIC framework for Yorkshire Water. Um, to undertake a early contractor involvement or ECI uh, investigation. Um, and this is a risk based contract uh, where essentially uh, we're given uh, the task of resolving uh, the client's problem, which was uh, in this case the in inadequate capacity of the existing system. Um, so, as project leader, um, I uh, led the investigation or feasibility stage uh, where we looked at. Uh, a range of different solutions um, that uh, included uh, anything from uh, new uh, outlets through the embankment, uh, siphons over the top, or even uh, pumping uh, arrangements uh, that could be used in an emergency. Um, and uh, through this uh, optioneering process, um, we identified that uh, the preferred uh, solution, both in terms of uh, cost, environmental impact, uh, and buildability um, was to upgrade um, the existing pipe work uh, located in the north south um, hydraulic uh, calculations that I undertook um, indicated that uh, we would be able to meet the time specifications to provide uh, a rate of drawdown of one meter uh, per day um, uh, and therefore uh, would comply with their own internal standards for the quality. So start um, with some further background and, and the figure of the dam. The so dam pass first bar is an earth embankment uh, constructed approximately north and south across the valley of the River Loxley. Um, it's located uh, to the northwest of Sheffield um, and forms the, uh, the downstream reservoir of uh, what's called the Bradfield Reservoir. Uh, that's Dale Dyke, um, uh, Agden, uh, and uh, and, and other reservoirs in the valley. So, um, shown in red on this figure is the North Scour pipe. Uh, so we have uh, two scour systems, um, a North and 
south, uh, but uh, the focus of our work was in the north. Um, and at the downstream end of that, shown in blue, is the outlet uh, or the point of discharge uh, from the system. Unfortunately, this point is located at the foot of the embankment uh, with no uh, existing access tracks or other means of accessing it. So one of the first challenges that we um, had to overcome as part of planning for this work um, was to uh, identify a, a safe and suitable route to get to the outlet. Um, and we did this through a proposal for a temporary hall road um, shown in uh, yellow-orange, um, which would then lead to the, uh, the radius of a, uh, a crawler crane uh, that could be stationed uh, or located on the, uh, the downstream uh, bund uh, of the earth embankment and could then service between the, the hall road and the outlet itself. Um, so now uh, I'll just show you some um, uh, schematics showing the um, uh, embankment section. Um, so uh, for those of you not familiar uh, with uh, earth embankments or Pennine type uh, uh, dams, um, the, uh, the feature is formed with a, uh, a clay core shown in the centre beneath the dam crest. And this is the impermeable barrier uh, that prevents water from passing downstream. Um, it's supported upstream and downstream uh, by earth fill, uh, and in this case, um, a tiered section downstream to provide a more uh, robust uh, solution. So upstream of the dam, uh, the reservoir forms, um, as shown in blue, um, and uh, the SCAR system uh, enables that water uh, to be uh, safely passed through the earth uh, embankment uh, for use downstream um, and, and to prevent erosion of the dam. Um, so looking at the SCAR system, which is the pipe along the bottom, um, we've got the inlet on the left uh, and flow is then passed through that uh, system and are regulated and controlled by a valve uh, located beneath the valve tower. So this figure shows the original 1896 design, um, which um, is classified as a wet tunnel. Um, so downstream of the, uh, uh, the valve um, flows discharged into a masonry lined scar tunnel um, shown in white um, and then uh, finally discharged uh, into the river Loxley via the outlet. So during the 1950s, as part of reservoir safety works, um, the main guard valve in the valve tower was replaced. And whilst this work was undertaken, I think it took about three or four years uh, to complete, um, they installed a, a new section of pipeline, uh, the uh, four, five, seven millimeter diameter pipe shown in red. Um, and this provided secondary containment, so improved safety um, uh, in case of a leak, um, and they also installed a, a new control valve uh, towards the downstream end. Um, however, this was located uh, still within the tunnel and therefore a confined space. So as part of our um, scheme in 2018, uh, we proposed a number of um, elements to improve the safety uh, and operation of the dam. Starting on the left, uh, we automated the original manual guard valve. Um, so this uh, was operated by a gearing system uh, with up to 1500 turns, uh, and therefore the speed and um, ability to open that uh, valve was determined by the strength and stamina of the operations staff. Um, automating it uh, meant that at the touch of a button, uh, the gate uh, would open uh, and uh, that could be then undertaken in less than 15 minutes using hydraulic actuation. Um, our proposal then included upsizing that downstream length of uh, pipe, uh, increasing it to 900 millimeter diameter. Uh, and this increased the capacity of the pipeline in the region of six fold. And then finally at the downstream end, uh, a modified outline arrangement uh, was located outside of the SCAR tunnel. Um, and uh, in addition, we were able to automate uh, the flow control valve on the SCAR system, again, uh, meaning that that could be operated simply at the touch of a button. Um, so this is a, a record uh, drawing um, showing the original dam construction uh, and some further details of the SCAR tunnel itself. Um, 
uh, starting at number one at the outlet, uh, you can see that there's a, uh, a long length of uh, uniform diameter uh, tunnel. So this is about 75 meters uh, of tunnel, uh, approximately 2.4 meter diameter. Uh, so uh, quite, quite a, a decent sized tunnel, uh, big enough to walk in. Um, then as we move into the blue box, dark blue box, uh, uh, we've turned this uh, section, the restricted section, and what happens here is the tunnel uh, diameter steps down through a series of uh, sections uh, and reduces just to um, uh, 1.6 meter diameter. And so during uh, entry into the tunnel in these sections, uh, you do have to bend your head uh, to get through. Uh, and then finally, at the upstream end, shown in red, uh, we have the bulkhead wall. Um, and so this is a brick and masonry infill section around that original guard valve. Um, and so there's no connection between the shaft uh, and tunnel, uh, which there often is at other reservoirs across Yorkshire. Um, and that means um, essentially that there's uh, one way in and one way out of the, uh, the tunnel. So as a confined space, uh, we um, uh, considered the uh, restrictions during the design, um, but also as a reservoir, uh, we followed uh, something called a uh, risk method and contingency plan uh, to ensure that the reservoir safety uh, was maintained during the works. So some photos, so starting on the left, um, these are the original uh, manual valves used to operate the SCAR system at the downstream end. Um, the two uh, pipelines, one of which is the SCAR at the bottom and the uh, high level one is a compensation pipe uh, used to uh, discharge flows throughout the year. In the center, um, you can see the steps reduction in uh, the tunnel size as we move towards uh, the bulkhead, which is the photo on the right. Um, and this uh, is a sort of um, uh, arched or egg-shaped section of tunnel um, where um, the pipework uh, then passes through into that bulkhead uh, infill section. Uh, during the design of the scheme, uh, we were uh, considering uh, the environmental elements, uh, and this included uh, reducing the need for new pipework by reusing uh, the existing uh, sections upstream of the bulkhead. Um, we were also, um, where we took out existing valves that were still in good condition, they were put aside for reuse on other sites. Uh, and finally, um, all the metal uh, that was otherwise un uh, unrequired um, was recycled. So this figure um, just shows a bit more detail around the uh, bulkhead um, in the center of the dam. Uh, and this is one of the unique features of the dam, um, which was designed by uh, Thomas Hawksley, uh, quite a prominent um, designer at his time. Um, in uh, yellowy orange, uh, we can see upstream of the valve and downstream of the valve, there are two uh, slip piece sections. Uh, and these are quite unique um, as they enable um, differential movement uh, between the valve tower uh, and the scar tunnel upstream and downstream uh, of the tower. Also uh, accommodate uh, movement and flexure of the clay core, um, potentially during construction, but also during operation and the cycles of um, empty and full uh, for the reservoir during dry uh, and wet periods of the year or, or particularly dry years. So upstream of the bulkhead, uh, shown in red, uh, you can see that all of the original pipe uh, was uh, 914 millimeters ID, shown in purple. Uh, and so this is one of the reasons that we were able to um, uh, upgrade the original um, SCAR system. Uh, was that the upstream section provided uh, a much greater diameter system uh, that we could essentially extend uh, downstream. So shown in blue uh, is the approximate position of the original 457 ID pipework, uh, which as part of this scheme we propose to remove and replace with the new larger 900 pipe. So then some photos of um, the uh, the connection. So this was uh, a really important part of the scheme, uh, transitioning from the original pipework onto the new pipework. Um, this required a transition uh, both from imperial to metric uh, pipeline, 
uh, but also from a uh, cast iron pipeline onto the new ductile line. Um, so we did this at a flange reducer section of the original pipeline. Uh, unfortunately, it reduced uh, just less than 900. Uh, so we had this uh, tapered uh, transition piece fabricated, um, and these were uh, produced in sections for improved hydraulics, uh, but also to enable construction uh, and for the site teams to get access to the flanges uh, during the installation. So uh, one of the unique features of our proposal for this site uh, was uh, a proposal for a rail guidance system. Uh, and so taking inspiration from historic railway tunnels and also uh, a bespoke system developed by MMB um, at the Water Settles uh, Reservoir, uh, where a rail guidance system was used to slide uh, large precast concrete sections into place. Um, I developed a proposal for a rail guidance system to install the pipeline. Um, and this proposal uh, took a little bit of uh, um, explaining to members of the team, to the client and, uh, and others. Um, and so as part of that explanation, I produced a, a small model um, using some DIY materials. So here you can see in uh, gray, uh, a section of uh, plumbing pipe work used to represent the spigot and socket uh, 900 millimeter pipe sections. Um, and in black, uh, a larger section of pipe, but still not much larger, uh, representing the confined space of the scar tunnel itself. So my proposal uh, was to install the new spigot and socket sections of pipe um, on uh, integrated pipe supports and straps, uh, which could then be placed on a rail system and pushed into the tunnel. So this photo shows uh, the straps uh, and supports, and in white, the, the rails leading into the tunnel. So what this system enabled um, uh, to be undertaken uh, was for each of the uh, sections to be pushed into the tunnel uh, with very tight tolerances uh, between the, uh, the pipe and the, and the tunnel wall. Um, and also, um, it ensured that each uh, section of pipe uh, using the same size pipe straps and supports uh, could be pushed in, into place in, in alignment with each other, ensuring that the spigot and socket sections would align uh, whilst the site team were working at the downstream end of the pipe. Um, pushing home uh, the spigot and socket sections of pipe together is a really important uh, process during uh, the uh, installation. Um, and so I developed a proposal for a, um, a buffer type system um, to enable um, each uh, section to be, to be jacked into place and essentially act as a jacking frame uh, for that installation process. So uh, using the model, I had to uh, develop the designs in uh, uh, discussion with the site team, uh, taking on board their comments for constructability uh, and uh, the safe processes that uh, would be required to ensure that. Uh, we also used a 3D model, a Revit model, um, to uh, ensure that the pipeline uh, would fit uh, within such a confined tunnel uh, and accommodate uh, specific details within the tunnel. Uh, and we then uh, output from the 3D model uh, to produce 2D drawings for fabrication. And this slide uh, shows the transition uh, from uh, the model and the concept uh, through to the delivery. And I'll now pass over to Matt. Thanks, Paul. So from concept to reality, the photos that you can see here uh, show the guidance rails uh, installed within the tunnel. Uh, a lot of work went in to get these sections laid out uh, in terms of getting a leveled concrete invert in place. And to the right, you can see the um, 900 pipe placed onto the rails onto a fiber reinforced concrete plinth, which we had to lift from the crane, which you can see at the top, from the middle berm um, into the, uh, onto the tunnel outlet entrance. We designed the modular rail system for off-site manufacture. So all the metal work was off-site uh, and brought to site in small loads to reduce the manual handling risks uh, and the pipe and, and the, um, the rail systems were obviously brought up the tunnel by our team on the ground. 
This photo here just shows a bit of an overview, um, showing the outlet there. Uh, and as Paul sort of said before, uh, when we looked at the overall bird's eye view plan, the access and egress to the site was one of our first challenges. How do we actually get there? How do we actually get the pipe down there? We had to carry a lot of enabling works and a lot of temporary works designed to create the access routes in. Tracking plant on slopes, selection of plant, uh, and first and foremost is the lifting and the lifting operations and the risks associated with that. We installed a ladder system uh, along the berm and created access routes for our personnel to be able to walk down there. And we had to select a number of different items of plant like track dumpers and excavators where we could actually lift and transport the long sections of 900 ductile iron pipework to the middle berm or the top berm should I say sorry and lift from there down to the outlet and position a dedicated team of lifting crew, lift supervisor, slinger singlers to control these lifts to place at the bottom. Removing of the pipework, we had a number of bits of pipework to remove from inside the tunnel so we fixed a winch system outside and pulled the pipework out and we installed tyres um, inside the actual brick structure to prevent any damage while that pipework was removed and pulled out. One of the biggest challenges was how we actually get the pipe up there. Um, we had the rail system in place, we had the buffer system in place, we had the pipework. But how could we actually push the pipe up? We investigated, we investigated various methods to slide the pipe in, into the system, up the system, and considered various methods such as low friction PTFE. And we then came across a more suitable machine, as simple as it sounds a skate system to roll the pipework and push the pipework home. This gave Paul and the designers uh, food for thought to then go away and consider this and look at design calculations to ensure that the pushing forces were within the limits for manual handling and look at res rolling resistant calculations. On site, Paul worked with the site team and myself to develop this wooden bogey system. We had the bogey, how can we create a cradle to keep that in position? To solve it from twisting and jamming against the rails and then from there we then moved on to the mild steel bogey so we came with a concept of trial and error it worked we progressed that into a steel structure where we could actually locate the pipe support and the pipes on the bogey and push it up this provided a temporary solution uh, and it was a lot more robust and enabled us to carry out the works uh, safely This, career, this photograph shows the temporary steel buffer frame, uh, which again Paul created using a 3D SketchUp software. And the rails and the buffer system were designed to incorporate and fix into each other. So the rails we, we, we manufactured with bolt holes um, and enough fixing positions so that the buffer system could be positioned at each pipe length. Uh, enabling us to fix the same temporary works on each and every single pipe length within the tunnel. Now this was instrumental for the success as it meant that we didn't have to manage temporary work um, methods at each time we installed a pipe work by drilling and fixing and securing at each, of the, each end of the six metre length. The photographs there show the buffer system in place and the um, jacks in place there to, to push the pipe home. The temporary works calculations that were carried out, carried out works on the frame, frame members, the welds and the estimating deflection during two loading scenarios. First, acting as a jacking point for pushing the pipe home, the socket and spigot pipes into each other. And secondly, providing thrust restraint to a blank flange during pressure testing of the partially completed pipeline. Here's a short video of our installation team installing the 900 pipe work within the Scour Tunnel.
I'll deliver it to him because this is a number of personnel. It was working in a confined space. There was a lot of procedures we had to follow. We had a top man controlling it at all times outside. And we had some other people there that could transport up and down various bits and pieces for enable us to do our works. As this photograph shows here, once the pipe work was in, uh, it was in uh, and no, route, no room to get in. Um, we had a lot of extra work to do in terms of getting the cabling works, getting all the tray work, uh, all installed prior to this pipe going in so that we didn't have to go back. Uh, and we did some testing works um, to make sure that it was in its correct position before the pipe went home. And now another Paul just to go through the final closing sections on the operational improvements. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> so here on the left, uh, you can see a figure showing the uh, arrangement uh, at the SCAR outlet. So we have the main 900 uh, pipeline uh, continuing in a straight line. And this passes through a gate valve uh, to enable uh, opening uh, and closing of that pipeline. Uh, we considered options for a uh, flow control valve, perhaps a, a cone valve or something like that. Um, but uh, the client uh, was, uh, uh, their preference was for, for a gate valve uh, due to the reduced cost. Um, what we uh, looked to do with that gate valve was to uh, reduce the need for high level access. Um, so we uh, worked closely with the valve manufacturers uh, to agree that it would be appropriate to install the valve on its side, as you can see in the photo on the top right. Uh, and this enabled us to uh, locate the, uh, the actuator, the electric actuator, uh, and the other systems uh, required uh, to control the system um, uh, to be housed in a kiosk uh, shown on the figure on the bottom right. Um, what you can also see uh, is uh, the smaller diameter compensation pipe work. And this was a spur that came off the main scar pipe uh, just before the, um, the main valve. Um, and uh, this passed through an isolation valve, a flow meter, uh, and before moving on to a, uh, a flow control valve, in this case, uh, a VAG uh, Rico plunger valve. So this video uh, shows the completed pipeline in the tunnel. Um, so you can see here uh, improved lighting to enable uh, uh, the uh, inspection uh, of the system uh, uh, and also the alignment change where the pipe moves over to, uh, to one side of the main tunnel uh, to enable personnel to inspect and gain access. Uh, this next video shows the commissioning test. Uh, so this is back in summer uh, 2018, uh, where the team are operating the valve uh, for the first time uh, and uh, proving uh, that the work has been completed to the satisfaction of uh, the client and the government inspecting engineer. And here we can see the full flow uh, of um, six QMEX. Uh, which is uh, the full uh, discharge capacity of the system. So this concludes my presentation, our presentation. Um, and uh, some of the uh, key outcomes from the project, uh, we were able to improve the performance of the existing assets, uh, particularly retrofitting a solution to uh, existing assets is uh, something that uh, many uh, uh, of uh, the MMB team uh, um, have been working on similar projects. Uh, solving the engineering challenges, so working again on these existing assets uh, means that we have to think differently. Uh, we've got uh, a lot more constraints as compared to a new build. Uh, as part of the scheme, we were able to preserve that Victorian engineering and develop a design that was sympathetic um, to uh, the, uh, the existing uh, infrastructure. Uh, we maintained reservoir safety uh, and the safety of the site team throughout the project um, through planning, uh, risk mitigation uh, and teamwork together. And finally, um, together then, we were able to successfully deliver the project uh, meeting the client's um, uh, program and the uh, completion date for the project.
And that concludes our presentation. Um, welcome um, uh, questions online. And thanks for listening. Sure, no. uh, th thanks for a great talk, guys. Um, I think everyone can agree, understand now why it won the uh, Project of the Year Award last year um, in the onshore panel uh, category for the Parkland Industries Guild. Um, there were a couple of questions that came up on the um, chat window as we were speaking. The video will be available on YouTube in about a week's time. Um, if you just type Pipeline is School on YouTube, or oh, there's a link at the end of the presentation there. I appreciate that's not an easy search. Just go on the Pipeline Industry Skill search on YouTube. Um, Jax, you had a question, I think, on one of the chat windows. Do you want to ask that? A lot of people yeah, are on sure. mute. You need to come off yeah. mute when you start talking. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my question is mainly just regarding that um, section where it's very, very narrow section, um, deeper like or closer to the um, core how is that going to be maintained with that bigger pipe because currently it's a it's a 450 well if you put a 900 there's very very limited space as you've shown on that video like it's very very limited space and with the cabling and things like that inspections and maintenance how would that be yeah wouldn't there be a, a risk with that uh, yes, yeah, so um, just to come in with a, uh, with a comment on that, I'm, I'm trying to find a suitable photo, uh, but uh, it's probably probably this one that we're looking at here. Um, so as part of the rail design, uh, we designed the outside edges of the, uh, the rail to have no obstructions, um, and this meant that um, uh, we could uh, fit uh, um, CCTV tractors uh, or other equipment down the, the right hand or the left hand side of the pipeline uh, to enable remote inspection uh, of these elements. Um, something else that the client um, was uh, working on uh, but uh, that wasn't ready uh, for our scheme uh, was a, um, a, a track or a rail mounted system to, to enable um, uh, a similar arrangement to be hung from the ceiling. Um, so essentially um, the, uh, the inspection elements were uh, accounted for through enabling that CCTV access. Um, alternatively, uh, we did consider uh, grouting up the annulus, so the void between uh, the pipe uh, and the masonry wall, um, but the decision was made that at this stage we wouldn't grout it uh, and that we would um, uh, essentially uh, provide those monitoring uh, points um, and allow, um, uh, I'm sorry, this allowed um, that in the future, if it does need to be grouted up, that, that could still be undertaken. Yeah. Any other questions from anybody else? Um, just another question on on the um, rail system. How how costly is it though to install that? In, uh, does, does it outweigh the um, cost of temporary works and just? If, if it were just a normal normal construction rather than the rail construction? Um, the, the benefit with the rail system, we managed, because, because we've managed to design each uh, length the same with the same bolt spacings and the same, uh, in essence, the same, uh, we, could, we, we, we made a bit of a saving in bolt manufacture for using the same design and the same rail. Uh, there was a bit of time and in install in terms of installing the, uh, the, the rail system, but the benefit of this was actually getting the pipes up and getting them jacked in position uh, and pushing the pipe home. So in terms of a program benefit, there was a lot more program benefit with the way that we did it here. Uh, we managed to get this whole pipeline installed within three weeks, two weeks of getting these pipes pushed in and getting them jacked out. Um, you know, we, we've did a lot of innovative work on looking at ways of getting the pipe in. We could look at, um, we looked at putting some fixed winches within the actual structure itself to pull the pipe up, but then we were fixing into a, an ancient brick uh, scour tunnel, so we didn't want to didn't want to damage any cause any damage or detriment to it. Um, we, you know, considered um, various rails, track rails, uh, which came through a subcontract package, which was a very costly option, and we thought, well, actually. With this solution here, we can do this ourselves. Um, and as I say, that was the that was the benefit of it, really. I think one of the other things to add then about um, the alternatives was um, the existing pipeline uh, was uh, spigot and socket, but it was uh, placed on uh, sort of brick in intermediate supports. Mm. Um, and really, within that restricted section, um, where it's just 1.6 meters diameter. 
it, it would be virtually impossible to, to install a new pipe, push it in, uh, essentially put some temporary uh, supports in, and, th and then have gone in there and tried to cast either concrete or, or even brick uh, permanent supports in there. Um, that option could have could have been used um, at the downstream section where there's much more access into the tunnel. Um, but uh, once, we, like like Matt said, once we develop the the system for the for the main restricted section, actually reusing that design for for the other elements of the tunnel. Um, provided some of that cost saving. Yeah. Any other? Yeah, Matt, Matt or Paul, whichever. Uh, I'm obviously the rail system there that we've uh, installed. Everybody's talking about temporary works, but that will have been permanent works and will be there to aid any uh, maintenance works that are required to the pipe work for future I'm assuming yes yeah definitely I mean, that, that's <laughs> one of the great advantages of this is the the system could be used to install but also to remove um, and I think um, you know uh, the valves that are in there were installed in the 1950s so uh, in reality uh, you know maybe over the next 50 100 years that they'll need further refurbishment and there might be the need to, to get back up um, to yeah. that bulkhead area of the tunnel, so um, you know, uh, leaving in the rail system enables uh, the removal of the pipe uh, in a similar fashion to as it was installed. Good. Anything else? We, uh... All right. With that, but we'll call it to a close. Appreciate everybody coming today. Next meeting, we're having a break in January, but next meeting is 3rd of February. Um, we try and do this first Monday of every month. Um, good to see you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Good presentation, guys.